Hello, uh, my name is Nick Huntington Klein. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the very basics of getting started uh, with R uh, and focusing on the kinds of tools that we're going to be using in the rest of our econometrics course. Uh, like the last video, this video is probably going to be a little bit on the longer side, uh, probably meant to be taken in chunks. Uh, so as you go through, see one of the new things that I'm going to talk about, pause, maybe think about it, maybe try it out on your own, uh, and then move on to the next one. Uh, I'm going to assume that you already have our studio installed and we're going to get started from there. So uh, first, R. R is a programming language. Uh, it is a programming language designed to work uh, with statistics uh, and we're going to be using it for statistics and econometrics. And the, everything in R is, 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 uh, is an object. So what is an object? An object is sort of a thing that you can look at and you can think about uh, and it holds some information inside of that object. So let's give an example. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say A is one. So what's going on here? So first of all, I'm taking the number one, okay, that's a number, and I'm going to store it inside of this A object. Once I run this line of code, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have an object called A, and inside of that A is going to be the number one. I've also got this little arrow here, uh, that is the assignment operator. That tells me that I'm going to take the, uh, the number one, I'm going to assign it to B inside of that A. Uh, you can, if you prefer, do a more standard uh, way that you would do it with other languages with the, the equal sign, but I prefer this assignment operator because it makes really clear what exactly it is that we're doing. We're not saying that A is equal to 1. We're not asking if A is equal to 1. We're saying that A is being assigned to the value of 1. So once I run this, I have now the object A. And if you look over here in my environment tab, you can see that I have the object A and it stores the value of 1. Okay, so that's what an object is in R. Now there are many, 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 many kinds of objects in R. For now, let's just start out with numbers like this, which are pretty straightforward to do. So a couple things to remember about objects in R. Uh, well, they sort of exist in your environment. You can see which objects you currently have loaded in your environment. Uh, everything is an object. Functions are objects. Uh, data is an object. A regression creates an object as well. Uh, and also, if we can manipulate objects. Really, all that we can do in R, the only three things that we can do in R are create objects, run objects through functions to manipulate them, and look at objects. And that's pretty much all that we can do. All of the myriad, many complex things that we can do boil down to those three things. So, we've created an object. We've used the assignment operator here to create an object A, which contains A1. Now let's do that second thing. Let's run our object through a function to change it. Manipulate it. And let's say that I want to take that one, I want to make it into a two. So I'm going to do a plus one. It doesn't look like I'm running through a function, but I actually, I am. And we'll, we'll talk about other kinds of functions in a bit. So what's this going to do? It's going to take that a object and it's going to say, it's going to run it through the add one function. So I'm going to say this a, I'm going to add one to it. The add one function and say, what is it already? It's a one. I'm going to add a one to it. I should get back a two. So if I run this line of code, I'm going to get a two. Okay. So what is specifically happening here? is I'm taking this A object, I'm manipulating it, and this is turning it into a new object, and that new object is a 2. Now, when you put an object on a line by itself, it will print it out for you. So the reason why it didn't print a 1 here is because I didn't ask it to. But now I'm putting this on a line by itself. I'm putting this A plus 1 on a line by itself. So it's first of all figuring out what A plus 1 is. It's 2. It's noticing that it's on a line by itself, and so it's showing me the result, which is 2. However, notice something. If I put A on a line by itself and I ask for that, I get back a 1. Well, didn't we just add 1 to it? Well, yeah, we did add 1 to it, but then we just sort of had that object there. We didn't do anything with it. If we want to change the object, we need to reassign it. So if I want to take A plus 1 and make that be the new value of A, I need to reassign it. So whenever you do anything in R that changes an object, if you want to save the results of that, of that change, you need to reassign it the object. So now we have taken our new object, which was a 2, and we put that inside of A. So now when I ask for the value of A, it should give me 2. So we can create object with the assignment operator. We can manipulate objects by making changes to it, by running it through functions, and we can update the value of that object by reassigning it uh, again. Okay, so we have our basic objects. Now that we have our basic objects, we're going to put them together into a long string of objects, which is itself going to be an object called a vector. So I can create a vector in R a couple of different ways. I could, for example, do the numbers 1 through 10. That would give me the object of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can also use the C function, which is short for concatenate. So if I do C of 1, 4, 9, 2, 3, this will give me a vector of numbers 1, 4, 9, 2, 3. 
This is, of course, an object. It's an object that contains smaller objects inside of it as a vector. Well, let's, let's store that as my underscore vector. So now the object my vector, if I ask for that, is going to give me back one, four, nine, two, three. That's a vector. A vector is a just a, a bunch of objects all in a row of the same type. Okay, so these are all numbers. They're all the same type, so I can include them in a vector. I can get them all together with this C function right here. Uh, I can also look inside of this vector uh, using indexing. So if I say my underscore vec, and then in square brackets, I ask for the third element of my vector, it will give me back one, two, three. It'll give me back the ninth, uh, the nine here. Okay. I can ask for multiple variables. I can do my vec. I mentioned that this would give me the numbers one through 10. Let's get the numbers oh, two, through, uh, th two through four. It should give me back the, uh, the second, third, and fourth elements of my vector, which should be 492, which in fact gives me back 492. So I can collect together a bunch of objects into a single vector that contains objects of the same type. I can store that as its own object. I can do that connect collection with the C function right here. There are other ways to do it, of course. If I want sequential numbers like this, I can do one through 10. There are also lots of other functions that will give you back a vector, but C is the sort of baseline way to do it. Once I have a vector, I can look at certain elements of that vector by their position by putting square brackets after it and getting the number element that I want. Or I can do multiple elements at once, two through four. I can also uh, use true and false to tell it which elements to give me back. So I can say my vec, and I'm gonna do another vector inside of it, which is gonna tell it which objects I want. So I'm gonna do C, true, false, true, false, true. Now this inside here is its own vector, right? True, false, true, false, true. Uh, if I put it inside of this vector, it's gonna give me the first element, not the second one, the third element, not the fourth one, the fifth element, not, uh, and then that should be it, right? So instead of indexing by number, I'm indexing by true and false. And this is gonna turn out to be really handy uh, when you wanna do things like, give me all the observations for which this thing is true. Okay, uh, so, so far, we've got objects, we've got vectors of objects, we've got numbers, numeric variables. We've also got these, which are called logicals. True and false are logical variables that can only be true or false. Of course, we're not usually just working with vectors uh, when we're doing econometrics. We are typically building up to have a data set. Uh, and that data set is going to be a bunch of vectors all in a spreadsheet. So I've loaded up some data sets already over here. Uh, let's take a look at one of them. Let's take a look at this Legoland data set. If I click on this data set over here, it'll pop up. Uh, so I've got a couple of different vectors. These are three vectors sitting side by side. All these vectors have the same length. So they all line up in that sort of spreadsheet way. And this has all the data in it. And we see a couple of different types of data in here. I've got a, a location name data, uh, variable here. This is a uh, what's called a character or string variable. I've got the date here, which is a date object. If I ask it for what's the day before uh, May 26th, it will tell me May 25th. It can figure that out. I've also got this numeric variable, which is the number of times that this, uh, this attraction was visited on that particular day. So I've got a data set. Let's load up another data set. Uh, this one's gonna be called MT cars. I can use the data function to load up data sets that are already pre-stored in R. You can all, there are other functions that will help you read in uh, files. So we've got this MT cars data set. And I can look at that, which again is a sort of spreadsheet style. It's got these different uh, variables in it. These are all numeric variables. Once I have my data, I can pull out vectors or I can look at individual variables using uh, a couple different methods. One way that I can do is the dollar sign. So if I say empty cars, dollar sign, sill, it will pull out the vector of the number of cylinders in that variable right there. Uh, I can also use uh, double square brackets. And what that will do is that will let me use a string to refer to the variable and pull that out. Uh, and so that's how I can, uh, I, sorry, a data set is a collection of vectors all in a row. Uh, I can pull those vectors back out with the dollar sign or the double square brackets. And I might want to do that because I might want to um, put those variables through a function. So functions in R. Uh, let's do a very brief rundown of this. So there are a lot of functions in R. That's the whole thing. Functions are objects, you take objects, you run them through functions to manipulate them. We've already done one, which was plus one. So I could, for example, do something like empty cars sill plus one. This would give me back an ob the vector object in which all of the numbers have had one added to them. But there are plenty of other functions I could use. So for example, mean. Uh, let's just work with that one function. There are lots of other functions, but we could look up the help function file for those functions to figure out sort of how they work. And we'll also be talking more about specific functions 
later. So let's use the, the mean function. I want to take the mean of the number of cylinders. I notice, by the way, there's a pretty strong autocomplete function in R. If you, not remember, if you don't remember the name of the function, it will often fill it in for you. So I've pulled up the help file for mean. It's telling me that the mean wants an uh, R object. Uh, it could take a numeric vector. So I'm going to feed a vector to the mean, and it's going to give me back the mean of that data. Uh, it's got a bunch of other, other options in here I don't need to necessarily worry about right now, but this can tell me other options that I could set. For example, if I had missing observations in here, how could I handle that? Uh, lots of other things I could do. It'll also give me examples of using it. Uh, so I just take the vector, x, put it to the mean function. So if I want to get the mean of the, uh, of the number of cylinders, I can do mean of, the, and then the parentheses tells me that I'm putting information into a, um, a function, and then I can do the arguments of that function. So I can do a couple things. So one is it says I want the x argument here. So I could say x equals MT cars dollar sign sill. What's this going to do? It's going to take my MT cars data set. It's going to pull out the sill variable. And then it's going to make that the x argument of my mean function. So the mean number of cylinders is 6.1875. Uh, however, I actually don't need to say x equals. One nice thing about R is that uh, if you don't name your arguments, it will assume that you're going in the order that those arguments are presented. So x is the first argument in this function. So if I just say mt cars dollar sign sill by itself, it will assume that I'm trying to make this the x argument. So I'm going to do this. This should give me the exact same result. It knows that because this is the first thing I'm putting in, that it's meant to be the first argument here. And if you have a function that takes multiple arguments, uh, as long as you're going in order, you don't need to name them. Of course, if you want to skip the order, then you will have to name those later functions. So for example, uh, one of the arguments I can put in here is not rm. That's not in order. So if I want to skip trim and put in uh, na.rm, I do need to specify na.rm equals true. This won't actually make a difference because I don't have any missing data in here, but I do need to specify it. I can't just say true by itself because I, I want to skip the trim argument here. Okay. In the interest of making this not go too long, I'm going to split up this into the next video. Uh, so I'm going to stop here. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about some basic manipulation uh, using dplyr, which is a package that makes working with objects in R and data specifically a little bit easier. Thank you.